Okay, so when you're using short division, it can be that um, if you had a question like 45 divided by 2, then in some cases the number that you're dividing by doesn't go cleanly into the number, okay, into 45 in this case. So 2's into 4 go twice, 2's into 5 go twice, with one left over, okay, with remainder 1. Now, we're not in primary school anymore, so we're not going to write R1, okay, remainder 1. We want to go into decimals. Well, want is subjective, but the 1 is just hanging there. So what you want to do is you want to support it by putting in a 0 and decimal points, okay? So we add in a 0 and decimal points. And then you have 2's into 10, which go 5. So 45 divided by 2 is 22.5. If you had, um, let's say, 3 divided by 8, then this causes another problem. 8's into 3 goes 0 with 3 left over. So we have this 3 hanging, much like we had that 1. So we put in a 0 and decimal points. 8's into 30 go 8, 16, 24. So 3 times with 6 left over. We've got this another 6 now, okay? We put in another 0. We don't put in another decimal point because it doesn't make sense to have a, a number as 0.3 point something, okay? That doesn't make sense. We've already got the decimal point, so all we do is put in the 0. 8's into 60 go 7. 7 eighths are 56, so there's 4 left over. So we've got another number hanging. Put in another 0. 8's into 40 go 5. Okay, so 3 divided by 8 is 0 0.375. So, both of these show that you can use short division to go into decimals. Both of our answers here are referred to as terminating decimals, because they end. 22.5, there's nothing to left on the right. 0 0.375. There's nothing here but zeros, okay? So they just end. But in some cases, we're going to find numbers don't end. If we do 2 divided by 3, then 3's into 2 goes 0 with 2 left over. We need to put in the 0 and decimal points. 3's into 20 go 6 with 2 left over. 3's into 20 go 6 with 2 left over. 3's into 20 go 6 with 2 left over, etc. So 2 divided by 3 is 0 0.6666666666. And it goes on forever and ever, infinitely long. And we write that as 0 0.6 recurring. This is the recurring decimal. Okay? So the 6, if you've just got one number that is repeating, then we just put one dot over the top of the number that is repeating. You can have um, decimals that look like this. 2.13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 etc. And we write that as 2.13, and we put a, a point, or a circle, or a dot rather, over the numbers that are repeating, the 1 and the 3, okay? That's what's repeating, so we do 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, etc. If we had 3.719719719, etc., then we can write that as 3.719, and we put one dot over the first number and the last number. So it tells us that it's the 719 that is repeating each time. 
So these are how we, this is how we write recurring decimals. Another number that comes up when you divide by it, usually becomes a recurring decimal, is something like uh, 1 divided by 7. So 7 into 1 goes 0, with 1 left over. So we need to put in a 0 and decimal points. 7 into 10 goes once, okay, with 3 left over. 7s into 30 go 4, with 2 left over. 3s into 20 go 2, with 6 left over. 7s into 60 go 8, with 4 left over. 7s into 40 go 5, with 5 left over. 7s into 50 go 7, with 1 left over. And then it goes back to this pattern, okay? So 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, 5 has been the remainders. And so it keeps repeating. And it keeps repeating this... Nor, it keeps repeating the 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 part over and over again, okay? And this is how we would write it. 1 over 7, 1 divided by 7 is 0.142857 where the 142857 is what is recurring, okay? So that's a, a nastier version, and it's probably when I was working through, you were going, where the hell is this going, okay? But that is how it works, and that is how we can identify terminating and recurring decimals.